Hey guys, um, so before I get this painted, I wanted to take a quick video showing the insides, uh, the complete setup and how everything works. And then most importantly, the hatch. Um, I'm gonna show you how I made this hatch, um, the whole process, because anyone that's doing the acrylic sphere is gonna find out really quickly that this hatch is one of the most important pieces and probably the hardest part about the whole build. So I'll show you how it was done and try and make everything a little easier for when you do it. All right, so the very first thing is uh, I stenciled out where I was gonna widen this hole and I wanted to make sure that the edge of this lip would match up with the design work on the BB-8. Um, so once you get that cut out, the next part would be making uh, the mold. So this shell. And this shell specifically has uh, the inner shape, which matches up with the inner shape of this sphere so that the uh, VEX wheels can um, glide over it without hitting any sort of major bumps. Um, and then the outer side of the sphere, when it's bolted down, uh, will be completely smooth as well. So to do that, we want to create a mold of the sphere in another pre-existing spot. So, I used uh, Smooth On's Mold Max 30, and I added a silicone thickener so that it wasn't so runny, and uh, basically poured it over the top of it in a wide enough circumference that I could cut it down to fit uh, the opening that I needed. And I did about three coats with a register, and uh, if you have a little extra, you can just uh, fill up a um, small Dixie cup and uh, when that cures on the second or third coat that you use, just stick that on there uh, after you brush it on, and that works as a good register. After this is all cured, uh, I used a fiberglass to create a mother mold. So you would just brush that over the top of it, and then once that cures and hardens completely, you can peel everything off and then you'll put it back together. You're going to take make two castings um, using this mold. On the first casting, uh, you want to leave this hole out of it so it'll be smooth. I used uh, the Smoothcast 65D and you'll pour a little bit in here and slosh it around. Um, you wanna make sure it gets pretty close to the edge each time you do that. And you're gonna to wanna to do it probably three coats so that it's nice and thick. Um, once that's cured, you can peel it off of this saucer mold and you'll glue it onto the inside of here so that it's uh, the opening is sealed. Um, and what that's gonna do is create the first part of the um, cavity mold that we're making. So once that's glued onto the inside, um, you'll c drill a hole uh, through this shell and then with an X-Acto, uh, you can cut a hole to match that. And that's gonna be the pour spout. So then, with the first piece glued in place, you'll stick this on and make sure you have a good seal. And then you uh, would use the same 65D uh, plastic and you just pour it inside. And that's gonna take the shape of the cavity that you've created so that you have a perfect cap um, to fit this hole in the sphere. So after that's cured, you can pop it loose, uh, take out um, the first casting that you did, and you'll have a piece that the inside is flush with the inside of your sphere, and the outside is flush with the outside of your sphere. The next part takes a lot more time. Um, what I did is I got these uh, 
uh, tapped grommets and these uh, tapered screws that matched. And very carefully, one by one, I would drill a hole into the cap that matched up with the sphere, stick the grommet through, and then attach it from the outside and move on to the next one. And I would just do that over and over and over again until I had all of the grommets in place. Um, because this is acrylic though, you can't just glue these grommets in and be done because it's gonna chip and it'll be real brittle. So I uh, backed this up um, using this fiberglass sheet and uh, some 15 minute epoxy. So I'd mix it up and just slowly do sections to epoxy them in place and strengthen the acrylic. And then after that was all done, I took sandpaper and sanded it down so it was flush so that these wheels wouldn't catch on any of the lips. Um, so that keeps everything from uh, breaking and cracking. And you're gonna want a lot of these. I used 12. Um, there's so much weight from these weights that when one of the wheels comes across here, it will, uh, I, it's a lot of pressure being put on these. So the more you do, the better. Um, 12 seems to work out pretty well. So because I haven't gotten to the cosmetic part yet, um, I've just been working on the mechanical, it's still a little rough. Um, this build has a separate servo and a separate receiver that is both uh, linked to one RC so that they can be independently controlled. Um, but the single servo in here controls the head spinning. Um, you want the head to be as lightweight as possible. Um, so I'm using all plastic um, gliding balls. Uh, the magnets that I used, um, a lot of people are using multiple magnets. I'm trying to do as few as possible so I'm using 70 pound, 75 pounds um, strength magnets, and I have four of them. I have two uh, inside of the sphere, and I have two mounted on the inside um, of this cap. And this cap, um, I use the same uh, mold for the sphere um, for the cap, so it's the same shape. So most of the parts in this kit are from Servo City. Um, some of the other ones are from uh, Vex Robotics. And uh, the magnets, I'll have to put up a link. I forget off the top of my head where I got the magnets, but I'll leave a link. Um, the uh, most important part uh, as far as stability that I found is the amount of weight that you have, and you have to have it at the lowest center of gravity um, that you can. So I have uh, about 20 pounds worth of weight on the bottom. And I have them so they're just gliding about a, not even an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the sphere. So they're as low as can possibly get. Um, the motors that I have on there are 165 pounds of torque, I believe. Um, and then I'm running uh, two six volt batteries. They're 4,200 milliamps and I'm running them in series. Uh, and this motor controller is from Servo City as well, um, which seems to work out really well. One thing when you're building this, a really good idea is to build one of these stands right off the bat. Um, if you're ordering parts from Servo City, it's real simple. Um, so these are just three heavy duty transfer wheels and then just uh, build a T-bar. That way you can spin it all around really easily and you can do your test runs on it as well.
All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, next, I'm gonna be doing all of the paint work and uh, the body work for the head. Um, so it'll look a lot nicer once that's done. Um, as far as paint work, uh, with this setup, I'm thinking it's probably best to just do a flat paint job and uh, do some shadowing and detail work to make it look like it's engraved. And that's only so that the transfer wheels on the head don't catch anything when it's rolling around. Um, I'm trying to limit as much noise as possible. Right now it's pretty much silent when it's uh, running. The sound you hear is these uh, wheels down here. The bearings in them are very loud, but of course when it's riding on the floor, none of that's happening. So I'll do another video once I have the paint done.